Welcome students, colleagues, family, and friends to the White Coat Ceremony for the Residential Doctor of Physical Therapy Program with A.T. Still University's Arizona School of Health Sciences. Please be seated. I'd like to apologize for the slight delay. We were just adding some seats so that more of you could enjoy today's ceremony. So thank you for your patience. I'm Deanne Fay, the director of the Doctor of Physical Therapy Residential Program. And I wanna take a moment to thank all of you for being here today and helping us celebrate this milestone in our students' academic journey, as well as their professional careers. It's always very encouraging to see all the family and friends in the audience because without your support, it's very likely the students wouldn't be here. We greatly appreciate your efforts and I'm sure the students do as well. The white coat is often seen as a symbol of caring, professionalism and trust that must be earned from our patients. I once read that the white coat represents two key principles for the provision of care professionalism and humanism, traits that come through the ability to balance excellence in science with compassionate patient care. Today, the donning of the white coat symbolizes the physical therapy students transition from the academic portion to the clinical portion of their education. It is also a time when they will have the opportunity to apply all they have learned, as well as a time when professionalism and compassion become paramount for patients under their care. Thank you for the opportunity to work with your children, spouses, and friends over the last two years to prepare them for this transition. We are confident they will meet and surpass the expectations of care this white coat represents. I'd like to introduce our stage party. First, we have Dr. Phelps, president of A.T. Still University. Dr. Gevitz, the senior vice president of academic affairs. Dr. Bordnave, chair of the physical therapy program. Our guest speaker, Dr. Kimberly Vernado. And our other program faculty have played such an instrumental role in helping bring the students to this day. I'd now like to welcome Dr. Norman Gevitz, the Senior Vice President of Academic Affairs, to the podium for opening remarks. Eight years ago marked the 100th anniversary of the graduation from Reed College in Portland, Oregon, of what were then called Reconstruction AIDS, the prototype of what became physical therapists. The physical therapy profession was born out of social and medical crises. First, the need to provide trained individuals to effectively treat through manipulations the thousands of individuals who contracted polio in 1915 and 1916, and then the thousands more who were then maimed and injured during the first and Second World Wars, and the military conflicts thereafter. The aging of the US population has also spurred recent growth. In the 1950s, there were just 39 college level physical therapy education programs in the United States. By the 1960s, there were 52. Today, in 2022, there are 287 such parent and extension PT programs. From baccalaureate training, entry-level physical therapy programs have progressed from master's degrees and now to doctoral programs. As of 2019, there were 312,000 physical therapists in the United States, and there is considerable need for more DPTs in the future. It is estimated by 2030, there'll be close to 350,000 physical therapists in practice, and still there is expected to be a shortage 
of needed PTs as older practitioners decide to retire. ATSU is committed to educating competent, caring, and compassionate healthcare providers. Our PT program is committed to, and I quote, graduating autonomous practitioners who value lifelong learning and demonstrate expertise in clinical reasoning and critical appraisal of evolving knowledge to provide high quality services to individuals across the continuum of care and lifespan in a dynamic healthcare system. Today marks an important transition for you on your journey to becoming a doctor of physical therapy. We are committed to your success. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Gevitz. In your program, it says next is Dr. Ann Lee Birch. Unfortunately, she's ill and couldn't be with us today. So instead, I'm going to invite Dr. Lori Bordenave, Chair of the Doctor of Physical Therapy Program, to speak to you next. You've got to find those readers, as the students know. They invite me over to their computer. I'm like, I can't see anything. Good afternoon. Um, I wasn't on anticipating an opportunity to speak with you today, but I'm really happy to do so. I know that Dean Birch wishes that she could be here with you, and she sends you all her congratulations. Um, I've taken much of what she was planning on saying and kind of added some of my own thoughts to it as well. First, congratulations. You've reached this really significant day. I know you've been waiting for it, right? Your white coat ceremony. We as a program have chosen to hold this event to coincide with the day where you're making the transition from the classroom to the clinic. Yesterday, you took your last classroom exam. Yeah, exactly. And in just a few short weeks, you'll be entering the clinic, an environment that's dynamic and where there are community of patients in need of your care and your expertise. At this stage, your patients, in many ways, become your ultimate teachers. Your patients will teach you not only about pain, function, range of motion, strength, endurance, and the host of physical reasons that they come to you and might be experiencing, but also about how their ho housing, their work, their economic stability, their social and mental health, food scarcity, maybe social isolation, how those may be contributing towards optimal health. This next phase is so exciting. I hope that you embrace it with all that it has to offer. As I pointed out, this is a big point of transition for you. And transitions can really be liberating. They give you a fresh start. And I encourage each of you to be intentional about this transition and how you navigate the change. Take this time to step back and step forward with a renewed sense of purpose. As Dr. Fay already mentioned, the white coat symbolizes that you're ready for this transition into the clinic. I hope that you're determined to continue to learn within this clinical environment, integrating the compassion and the evidence-based practice, the science and the humanity that's really central to this amazing profession of physical therapy. I imagine some of you might be a little nervous. You're probably a little excited. There's all sorts of possibilities over the next year. But over the past two years, you've learned to be adaptable as you adapted and, and got into online learning. And well, there was a whole bunch of other stuff that happened too, I heard. 
So as you face this change, this transition, I'm really confident that you have the ability to adapt to it. And I know that the faculty, these amazing colleagues who I am proud to work with every day, have prepared you well for this transition. And you, each one of you, have put in the effort and time to attain the knowledge and skills to be successful so that you can move into this next phase. So, as you immerse yourself in your clinical experiences, stay connected to those who encourage you when you're feeling discouraged. Stay balanced, rested, healthy. Reach out to your faculty, reach out to your clinical instructors when you need help and guidance. Transitions are an opportunity. So when you see your white coat, whether it's on your shoulders or hanging on the back of your door or in the closet or in the moving box, remember that you have the skills to be an amazing physical therapist and take the opportunity to impact your patients and your profession. Congratulations on this milestone. So now it is really my honor and pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Kimberly Vernado. Dr. Vernado is the founding program director and associate professor of the College of St. Mary, a blended learning program, doctor of physical therapy program in Omaha, Nebraska. She received her Bachelor of Science degree from Tennessee State University, her Doctor of Physical Therapy degree from Indiana University, and a Doctor of Health Science degree with an education concentration from A.T. Still University. Dr. Vernado completed an orthopedic residency in manual therapy, orthopedic, uh, manual orthopedic physical therapy fellowship training at Kaiser Permanente in West Los Angeles, California. She is a board certified orthopedic clinical specialist emeritus and a fellow of the American Academy of Orthopedic Manual Physical Therapists. In 2018, Dr. Vernado graduated from the APTA Fellowship in Education Leadership Program. Her research interests include investigating blending learn blended learning models, diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives, and faculty mentorship in physical therapy education programs. Dr. Vernado is currently serving her third term as a delegate for the a a uh, APTA Arizona chapter. In addition, she serves on the board of directors for the American Council of, the, of Academic Physical Therapy and was just recently elected as secretary. Um, so please join me in giving a warm welcome to Dr. Vernon. Thank you so much for that warm uh, welcome and, and also for that amazing introduction. Uh, Class of 2023, it is a, an honor to be here with you all. And I prepared just a very short message <laughs> to wish you well as you transition into clinical practice. And the, the name of my talk is The Responsive Practitioner, very much in line with the mission of your DPT program and what has already been shared by Dr. Uh, Bourdain. So I can imagine as you're about to transition into uh, your clinical rotations that you might be feeling uh, a number of feelings right now. Uh, one, I would think uh, being ready. You've been in class with for two years now, and you're ready to get out and work with patients. You've been practicing on each other healthy subjects, <laughs> very much different than working with uh, patients. Some of you may be very excited because you've got placed in your, your dream clinical rotation. And so perhaps this could be an opportunity for you to really live out what you've been planning in your mind as you started your DPT career. Some may be nervous. I mean, how many special tests did you actually learn for the shoulder? <laughs> uh, will you actually remember all those things you're out in clinical practice? Another very real feeling is uh, fear because of all the different patients that you're going to see or the complications that you might see and how to actually manage all of those different things. And another real thing is maybe all of the above. And I believe every practitioner in here has had those same feelings. 
and just know that that's normal. Something else that you have to manage is the fact that we have a very changing world. And the good news is we know a lot more information now than we did when I graduated from PT school many years ago. <laughs> uh, we know more about health disparities. Not that that information wasn't known, but it's a bit more common knowledge. So we, we, know now, we now have information that we can use to better help our patients. There's also increased communication. Uh, when we were locked up in quarantine, we found ways to reach out to one another. I know when I had a, a conference coming up, I would contact some of my colleagues. Now we have a constant text message every day where we basically support one another. So there's more communication, which is great. We also know more about what other people think and how they see life and their perspectives, and that's always good to know. We also have information more about historical perspectives. I was just at a, doing a talk in April, and I shared with the attendees that I had just finished reading Dr. Martin Luther King's last novel before he was assassinated, From Chaos to Community, Where We Go From Here. And it was so amazing to read what he wrote over 50 years ago and to see how a lot of that information from our great thought leaders could be used as we try to solve today's problems. We're also a bit more self-aware. We're conscious about how people perceive us. We're conscious about how people perceive uh, one another. And so I think being more self-aware as opposed to just being you know, singular focused is, is, is a good thing. The other thing is we've learned how to navigate with COVID. I think our healthcare workers have done an amazing job navigating uh, just this, the changing world and the changing um, virus. And so these are unique opportunities for you all to make some amazing differences out in clinical practice because now you have all this information and different resources to go out and, and, and make a difference. And so I have two recommendations given what you feel right now being nervous or excited about going into clinical practice, in addition to all the things I just shared about the changing world. And these two recommendations come from two very important people um, in my career. Um, I learned this when I was uh, a fellow in training over 10 years ago. And one of them was about creating safe spaces for your patients. And the second is about being a responsive practitioner. The first person I wanna share with you is uh, one of my mentors, Dr. Kathy Kumagai Shimamura. Uh, Dr. Kathy Kumagai was an orthopedic specialist and a neurospecialist and a fellow of the American Academy of Orthopedic Physical Therapy. Uh, Kathy passed away last February, but she taught me some amazing lessons when I was a fellow. Uh, Kathy had so much information and so much knowledge. And what was so amazing about her is that if she noticed that someone was nervous around her, she had this amazing way of disarming people. So think about that when you're out with your patients. You have a lot of information that they don't have access to. If you notice that they're a bit nervous, by disarming them and by just smiling or connecting with them and creating a safe space that allows people to trust you and open up so that you can really help them. And so I just want to leave that piece with you. Just remember to create safe spaces. And at the time when Kathy was teaching me this just by her, you know, her, her being and just how she connected with me, I didn't think about uh, what it was called back then, but now we have more terms for it. So it was really helpful to kind of think back to what Kathy was doing, probably not even intentionally, but it was just her way of connecting with people. Uh, the second picture here is uh, of one of my mentors, Dr. Dennis Dempsey. Uh, Dennis, uh, he's smiling in this picture, but when he was mentoring me as a fellow, he wasn't always smiling. <laughs> Uh, Dennis uh, had this amazing way of uh, always connecting with patients. He studied in Australia um, under Maitland. And so imagine being taught by someone who studied with Maitland. It's always an interesting mentoring session. Uh, my job was as, a, as the person being mentored early in the morning was to not upset him for the rest of the, the fellows who were coming behind me. Uh, and I, I typically succeeded, uh, but on this one time, I was uh, working with him and I had a patient in the, the room and it was a really small space. And I'm speaking with the patient, asking her questions, and I've got my to-do list of things I wanna work with her on. And the patient shares that she's afraid. And I, I went to the next question. And Dennis said, whoa, Kim, did you hear what she just said? She said she's afraid. And that was a very small room. Of course, I heard what <laughs> the patient said. And he said, do you know why she's afraid? And so I turned to the patient and said, you know, uh, would you please explain a bit more what you mean about, you know, being afraid? 
And the patient shared that she was concerned that if she couldn't get back to doing this particular task, that she wouldn't be able to fulfill a role that was really important to her. And I thought, you know, wow, what a missed opportunity. But I quickly recovered and we helped her. And during that session, it went well. And afterwards, during my debriefing, um, Dennis said, Kim, you know, you could have helped her, of course, increase range of motion, increase her strength. Um, but if you didn't get to the key thing that she mentioned was most important, which was, you know, doing that particular task, would you have really met her expectations? It's important to really collaborate with your patients and form that partnership. And so, you know, I know you have a lot of things that you're thinking about doing with your patients, but make sure if they say something that you don't keep going, that you pause and take notice of what they say, and then, you know, respond and adjust what you're doing. And I've done that over and over again for the last, I don't know how many years, and it's been very helpful in my clinical practice to this day. And so in closing, as you're going off into your clinical rotations and responding to this changing world, I think it's just important to consider those recommendations of creating those safe spaces for your patients so they can be vulnerable and you build those trusting relationships. I know when I came out of PT school, they talked about being a drill sergeant. I don't think patients really need that. They need someone who can actually sit and listen with them and allow them to be vulnerable in their true authentic selves. Uh, the next piece is making sure that when they do share something, don't go past the speed bump, <laughs> pause, listen to what they've shared, and then respond appropriately. And you'll get great outcomes. Congratulations, class of 2023. <laughs> it has been a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you so much, Dr. Vernado. As I spoke earlier of this transition time from everything you've done academic to moving into the clinic and that personal, professional, and compassionate side, I don't think anything could be better than the advice that you just heard. So thank you again. We greatly appreciate it. I'd like to just take a brief moment to also thank our staff for all the work that's gone on in the background to make today possible. Tressa Morales, Erlinda Cisneros Johnson, Cassie Reynolds, and Joanne Pelton have worked tons of hours to make today possible for you. Um, I'd also like to thank Nick and Holly and the other staff from IT for their contribution to helping everything run smoothly. So thank you. And now, it's the time you're waiting for. <laughs> All done with that, and we get to move on to the white coat presentation, the moment that you have worked so hard for, I was going to say the last two years, but it's been a lot longer than that, and we recognize that. So as you move through and get your white coat, think about the importance of this moment, this transition, and the work that you've put in, and then the celebration that you get to have as you move on to the next step. To help with the white coats so, um, presentation, I'm going to have three faculty members help. Dr. Jesse Hayes will be reading the names and then helping with the coats will be Dr. Corey Manton and Dr. Ginny Little. So come on up.
Taylor Ani Jasmine Core Fain. <laughs> Kaylee Fates, Molly Blaney. Courtney Folk, Stephanie Fame. Josh Branshaw, Kayla Bridges. Sarah Brinkman, Rachel Brunner. <laughs> Terry Carr, Logan Christensen. Makaya Crozier, Ryan Cruz. Kimberly N. Dang, Shelby Davis. Cassidy Divine, Brian Dunlavy. <laughs> Bo Duran Slay, Shayna Edson. Nicole Elms, Armani K. Garnett. <laughs> Mackenzie Ann Greenhall, Peyton Greer. Paige Catherine Henderson, Claire Husingay. <laughs> Ashley Jama, Aspen Faye Johnson. Eleanor Johnson, Tyler Johnston. Yes. K. 
Kayla N. Curran, Dale T. Lunt, Jr. Jennifer Rose Majeris, Carly Martin. <laughs> Allison McCabe, Brittany Mumford. Joelle Diana Chaco Navarro, Trevor Benjamin Nelson. Alec Nesbitt, Gamal Oki. Mega Patel, Rena Patel. <laughs> Shayan Payami Poor, Connor Pensivi. Joanna C. Perez, Derek Plath. <laughs> Nadine Curell, Brianna Ramsey. Courtney Joe Robinson, Angelica Rose Rodriguez. <laughs> J.T. Rummage, Levi Robert Schmillen. Amanda Jean Sharp, Allison Claire Sima. <laughs> Francis Sinfuego, <laughs> Emily Tatsumi. <laughs> David Underwood, Caitlin Elizabeth Walsh. <laughs> oh, 
Noah C. Watson, Justin Daniel Westbrook. Bryce Wiles, Jessica M. Wujek. I would now like to invite Dr. Pamela Kays to recite the physical therapy oath. Thank you, Drs. Manton, Little and Hayes, and physical therapy faculty. Students and faculty, please rise and join me in reciting the physical therapy oath which is located on page six of your program and on the screen in projection. As a physical therapist dedicated to providing the highest quality care and services, I solemnly pledge I will respect the rights and dignity of all individuals who seek my services or with whom I work. Act in a compassionate and trustworthy manner in all aspects of my services. Exercise sound professional judgment while abiding by legal and ethical requirements. Demonstrate integrity during interactions with colleagues, other healthcare providers, students, faculty, researchers, the public, and payers for enhancement of patient care and the advancement of the profession. Enhance my practice through lifelong acquisition and application of knowledge, skills, and professional behavior. Participate in efforts to meet physical therapy and healthcare needs of local, national, and global communities. Thank you. And Dr. Fay will um, come up next for the next. Okay, at this time you can be seated. <laughs> so thank you, Dr. Kays. And next, I welcome President Phelps to the podium for closing remarks. It is a great day and a great story. With so much going around in the world, uh, you know, this is a day to be, be happy for our students and all the great things that they're doing and will continue to do. So thank you for bringing some joy to our day today. Uh, wow, we heard some great remarks. Uh, Dr. Bournave, thank you. Dr. Fay, thank you. Dr. Gevitz, thank you. Uh, Dr. Bernardo, that was just wonderful. Concise to the point. That was a lesson on emotional intelligence, right? <laughs> Right? There's gonna, you're going to have some patients that are going to drive you nuts, right? And they're going to say things or wear things or do things that when you see them, you're going to go, I'm not so sure about this. But you're going to find a way, right, to connect with them. So maybe they're wearing a Golden State Warriors shirt, right? <laughs> maybe Chicago Cubs, whatever, you know, whatever you don't really like, for instance. Uh, but you might become a Cubs fan that day, and you might become a Warriors fan that day, and you might connect with that person through that, or you might see something that they're reading when they come in, and you go, well, tell me a little bit about, you know, what's in the news today, or what that novel's about, right? Ways to connect to that patient to build that ease, right? So the white coat, in addition to having all these really cool pockets, right, you know, all over the place, you can put your, you know, whatever's in there. I did leave mine at home today, right, because during the, the COVID the times, uh, the last white coat I, I was, I went to the, back to the house, thinking this morning that I've got another one at the office. So needless to say, I'm wearing something not as cool. Uh, but this is a great thing to put in your white coat because it tells you a little bit about today. And it's a blur, right? I know that. But five, 10 years from now, when you have that white coat in your closet or perhaps in your practice or on the door in that moving box, you might pull this out. You might say, wow, look at these great folks that I was in school with. This is pretty neat. 
look at these faculty. You know, this was pretty cool. Look at the people who supported me. And wow, what about that oath? You know, did I, am I living up to that oath? So I talk a little bit about oaths at some of the other graduations, and I really love the oaths. This is probably good to put somewhere uh, in your medicine cabinet, in your closet, somewhere where you'll see it from time to time, and maybe somewhere in your practice. So when the patients come in, they read this, and they say, wow, I want a physical therapist that does this. Pretty amazing. And you may give some talks someday, and you might refer to this oath, or you might become an expert witness in the industrial commission, or you might have to testify in some way, and they're gonna ask you about the oath. Oh, did you take that oath? Do you remember that oath? What about, it says this right here, are you doing that? Did the person you're talking about do that, right? So the oath is something that's really important. So put it somewhere where you can refer to it from time to time. And I do want to thank the folks at the Mesa Convention Center, and of course the ATSU staff and, and staff from um, ASHS that put, put all of this together today. The white coat is a psychological contract between you and your patient. And the white coat says that every day you will do what's best for the patient. Tough days, you'll have some days where there's chaos, but you need to remember back to that white coat and step forward and take care of that patient. You may find out that there are, as mentioned, issues that are much beyond musculoskeletal, right? Issues that have to do with the mind, the soul, the existence of those individuals. And you're gonna be able to affect them in ways that many other healthcare providers cannot. Healthcare providers may see somebody once and send them for physical therapy, you may see them six, 12 times, whatever that is, and you're gonna develop a different relationship. And I can remember one day in my practice, we'll, we'll call the patient Bob, physical therapist, and I practiced and been around physical therapists since I was a fellow, so that was in 1985. So imagine, that my whole life has been around physical therapists, right? I mean, you know, kind of drive you a little crazy. Um, but I had them when I worked together in our practice, and of course, uh, through the academic side here. But the, brought the patient over one day and he said, hey doc, can you take a look at this patient? And I'm always, absolutely, bring him right in. And uh, the patient was complaining of left shoulder pain, right? And so he had seen some other physicians, had some injections and was referred to physical therapy. And during the history, the physical therapist said, you know, something, something's just not quite right, right? You've had all these things, you know, before we do anything, let's go over it and, and talk to Dr. Phelps. So uh, this is a regular occurrence in my office and, and, and I welcome it and vice versa. I would bring patients over to say, hey, listen, I know your schedule is full today, but can you fit in Lori? Uh, Lori has something coming up and, you know, it was, yeah, sure, we'll make it work. Uh, but sure enough, you know, going through the history, going through the physical exam, the previous history of multiple shoulder injections, I said, yeah, I, I just don't think this is a musculoskeletal issue. And I had a medical student with me, and of course, a the physical therapist was there, and I said, let's, you know, just to be safe, let's, let's, you know, get an EKG and see what's up. And sure enough, there were some changes that, you know, made us a little bit suspicious. So the medical student and the physical therapist wheelchaired the patient over to the emergency room, uh, quadruple bypass later, uh, you know, the patient was a little upset. You know, I came to you for your shoulder and I ended up with a quadruple bypass. Uh, but we had to say, well, the reason you were having the shoulder pain because it was referred from your ischemia that was referring the left shoulder pain. And so that type of working together, right, is that teamwork is really what's going to help you pick up those cases that are the most difficult and the cases that, uh, you know, you want to make sure that, that you diagnose and do correctly. So that's why so much time is spent on listening and referring to the history and to the physical. And I don't think any group does it better than physical therapists. So you're gonna pick up a lot of cool things uh, that perhaps are, are missed during the rush of an office visit. Uh, and you're gonna have folks who come to you directly and you're gonna say, man, I don't think that's a musculoskeletal issue. And they're gonna say, well, why did I come to you? And you're gonna find out sure enough that it was something related to somewhere else. And they're gonna think then, wow, that physical therapist is pretty smart, right? So some good stuff. So, you know, we're going to get together in about how many months for graduation? Like only 12 months. So you got a lot to learn. <laughs> get started. Let's go. No, but think about that. About 12 months from now, you're going to be graduating. And you're going to be out there on your own seeing patients. So take advantage of every day. Do something a little bit extra every day to get you prepared. Something that you might have an interest in. Read a little bit more. Um, you know, I, they still read, right? I think that's still part of it. If not, you know, go on YouTube and watch something fun. Uh, but do a little bit every day. So it's been a pleasure to share a joyous part of a day today. And uh, thank you, family, for sharing the students with us uh, and significant others and friends. Uh, well, you've got a great group of, of folks here today. So that's it from my standpoint. We'll see you in about 12 months for graduation. <laughs> thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Phelps. I know today's been a bit of a blur with a lot of speakers, but I'm hoping that some of the thoughtful and inspiring words that you've heard from our different speakers, at least one of them, one concept would get through and be something that you can remember and take forth um, because it's gonna make a difference in the type of PT that you are. So on that note, I wanna take one more time to say congratulations to all the students on this next step of your educational journey. And let's give all of the students one more round of applause. And so that is the end of our ceremony today. But before everybody gets up and leaves, what we're gonna do is leave in a certain order. So first I'd like to excuse the faculty and speakers if you could go ahead on out. At once they've left the students, I'm going to have you follow Erlinda and Tressa and they're gonna bring you outside so that we can get a class picture. So I'm gonna ask all family and friends to please stay seated until the students have left and then you're welcome to go out and see the picture and everything. And then everyone can join up and celebrate this wonderful occasion once that's over. So again, congratulations. Thank you.